Hello, welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna to talk about how a circuit breaker works. I wanna take you through uh, just the basics and understanding so you as a typical homeowner can know what these things are for and why they are what they are, why they, some of them say 20, say 15, say other numbers on here and what that means to you. I'm not gonna talk about how it works on the inside like a lot of other videos might talk about, which, which is very interesting, it is to me but just basic knowledge for you on how a circuit breaker works. So before I continue, let's just go over to the panel. Let me just show you some basics over there. So here we are at the panel, and basically what you have here is the main breaker. You've got the wires from the outside coming in where all the major power comes in. And from here, all of these uh, individual breakers will clip into a bus bar in the back that's tied into this. And each one of these breakers will allow a certain amount of electricity to flow through to basically protect everything that's downstream on the line, right? So you don't want to have all this power that, that's coming into the house to be hitting a light bulb, for example, okay? Because that's going to cause problems for you. So each of these breakers where you have, uh, you know, 15, 20, 50, 40, those are all going to allow a certain amount of power, certain amount of amps, these are amps, 15, 20, 50, 40 amps to go through the wire that's attached to these downstream to all the devices that they control, okay? So this 50 here, that's the uh, air conditioning unit. This 40, that's a sub panel that's in the basement, for example. And these 15s and 20s, the 15s are typically think, uh, lighting, for example, and 20s would be going to maybe receptacles that have uh, items that might use more power, potentially your bathroom where you have hair dryers, or your kitchen where you might have toaster ovens, microwaves, and sometimes these things will control uh, individual items like um, a dishwasher. I think uh, this one here is a dishwasher and you might have the washer and the dryer on this one, for example, where you might, you might uh, keep um, either appliances or certain things restricted to one breaker because you know they use a lot of power, okay? And so what'll happen is, is that um, if you use too much power, too much draw, because you've got too many things plugged in downstream of one of these breakers, the breaker will detect too much power and will flip off as a safety precaution. So we have a 20 amp breaker here and each amp is equivalent to about 120 watts. Okay, so a 20 amp breaker should be able to supply at maximum output 2400 watts and a 15 amp breaker I believe is 1800 watts if I'm doing the math correctly, okay? And that's at maximum. You typically want to make sure that whatever you have plugged in or whatever lights you have attached to a breaker downstream are really no more than about 80% of the uh, of the total, okay? So using a 15, let's use a 15 amp breaker as, a, as an example where the maximum is 1800. Let's say uh, you have uh, a 15 amp breaker going to your bathroom, which I wouldn't recommend, and now you have a hair dryer that is 1500 watts. That's about all you should be able to plug into that. Maybe a, a light bulb or two after that. But if you have multiple bathrooms on a 15 amp breaker and you've got someone using a, a hair dryer or curling iron, different things, and then you're getting breakers fl uh, tripping, that, that's, uh, that's what the breaker is gonna do is prevent the overload downstream if you've got too many things strung together and it'll flip off protecting you, protecting the wires uh, from uh, overloading and potentially causing a fire and protecting any wire nuts that you might have and, and also protecting light switches and receptacles because they can build up heat there as well. So many older homes, including the home that I live in, it was done, you know, they, they came through the neighborhood and they put all these houses in and, and they did it as cheaply as possible and they they ran multiple rooms off of um, off of the same uh, breaker and you know it's it's caused problems in a, in a lot of homes and I can tell you that I, 
in in the home that I live in, when they when they built it, they put uh, two of the bathrooms on the same breaker, and you know, luckily the prior owner split that up and ran a dedicated line just to each bathroom because it wasn't just the bathrooms that was on that line; it was also a couple bedrooms, some hallway lights. It's crazy, and the builder does it; they get approved, and then they move on and. The homeowners bought this house where there's a potential issue. The good news is is that uh, we have LED bulbs today. And so when you had uh, a 60 watt bulb in the past drawing 60, 60 of the 1800 watts that I talked about on a, on a 50, uh, excuse me, a 15 amp uh, breaker, now that same, uh, the same number of lumens you get from a 60 amp bulb, incandescent bulb yesterday you're gonna get uh, the same amount of light output from only an eight and a half watt LED bulb. So converting to LED uh, lights is something that will help um, limit the amount of power that goes through your breaker, limit the amount of power that goes through your your electrical lines down downstream, and will help to prevent uh, potential uh, trip down the, down the road. Okay, so I hope that gave you a great explanation of how the uh, circuit breakers or electrical breakers work. If you have any questions, please, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll be sure to answer right away. Thanks again for watching. Hopefully you like this video. If so, hit that like button, and I'll see you next time.